the Charlie's Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Big Board Friday. Sponsored by Ohio Northern University. The best discoveries come from the unexpected. By the Toledo Clinic. Choose well, feel better. By PT Link Physical Therapy. Feel the difference and get relief now. And by Frickers, the home for fun, food, sports, and spirits. Now, here's Jordan Strack. Welcome into Charlie's Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Big Board Friday. It is week two of the high school football playoffs here in Ohio. Divisions one, two, three, and seven all playing tonight. One note before we start. Edgerton had to forfeit their playoff game with Lima Perry because of a positive COVID-19 case. The Bulldog season has ended prematurely. We are out in White House for our game of the week tonight. Anthony Wayne had a bye last week. St. Francis coming off a win against North Ridgeville. So let's get this show started. The Knights and Generals always fun when the track and NLL get together. Anthony Wayne had the Knights number in recent years, but tonight St. Francis would strike first near midfield. They get a little tricky. The double handoff, Jadian Harris from 48 yards out, throws everyone out of the way. It's 7-0 St. Francis. But Anthony Wayne would come right back. Cam Swiger finds Garrett Pike on the slant. He's got it. 24-yard pitch and catch for a general's touchdown at 7-all. Stays that way till the fourth quarter. The sophomore, Travis Kenner on for a 35-yard field goal. The Knights up 10-7. You know it's important if we're showing you a field goal. Last chance for Anthony Wayne. Under two minutes to go, a trick play. Pike wants to throw to the end zone, but it's picked off by KJ Dunstan, and that's how it ends. St. Francis wins a thriller, 10-7. We just worked hard. We grind. We did everything we were supposed to do, and we grind. It was a dog fight. Hats off to them. They're a great team, but we grind. We did what we had to do. Well, it meant everything. It meant everything for the seniors. We extend our season. This group, Team 65, is together for one more week. So, uh, you know, we're, we're dancing to the next round of the playoffs, and, and that's what it's all about. Uh, and, you know, these guys are fired up and, and loving every minute of it, uh, as is the school, the energy of the building, the, the teachers and the fact staff. So it, I'm just so happy and pleased for everyone. We, we knew coming into this, we were talking about it all week, that this is going to be an absolute dog fight, and that's absolutely what it was. Um, hats off to them. They're a great, well-coached team, well-disciplined. I'm... And our team, we just wanted it more, man. Uh, our seniors was talking about it. This is our last ride, and we made it. We made it memory. NLL and track here as well. St. Francis gets the winner of this game between Northview and Central Catholic. Irish had a bye last week. Good start for Central in this one. Give it to Prentice Reasonover right up the middle. This dude is just hard to bring down. Showing off the speed and the power would take it deep into Northview territory. It would set up a one-yard score. Irish up six nothing. Central can just beat you in so many ways through the air here. Bishop Vargas looking deep down the field, hooks up with Jay Sean rushing, wide open up the seam, 47 yard score, Irish rolling 13 nothing. Then it's back to the ground, Reason overpowering his way in for a three yard score, Central Catholic wins it 48 nothing. St. John's had a bye last week, home game for the Titans tonight, facing a sneaky good Barberton team. Titans hoping this is the start of a deep playoff run. St. John's would strike first in this one. Brady Lichtenberg throwing it up to the end zone. Thomas Zyrus on the other end coming down with it. Titans had an early lead, but Barberton would answer back with three straight touchdowns. So St. John's is down 21-7. This just before the half, trying to pull within a score. Lichtenberg throws to the end zone, but it is picked off. So the Titans had to try to mount a comeback in the second half. Lichtenberg scrambling, trying to find a man. He can't, so he tucks it and runs. He's down just short of the goal line. He would punch it in right after that, but that's as close as they would get. St. John's falls 21-14. Christy Kopanis has more. Jordan, between the slow start and the hole that the Titans dug themselves in, St. John's just couldn't overcome that. They did pull within a score, but at the end of the day, Barberton was much better than their record showed. At the beginning of the game, we just came out a little flat. Uh, defensively, we didn't play well at all in the first half. And you know, by the time we decided to start playing defense, it was the second half and we were able to shut them out. But you know, the damage had already been done by then and their defense played a heck of a game. You know, their defense really came out and kind of neutralized us the whole game besides those two drives. And I mean, it didn't end the way I wanted to, but I wouldn't change anything I had these past four years for the world. And no, I mean, I just, I, I mean, I just love St. John's so much. It just hurts to know I'm never going to play football for this school again. And I mean, I just love every second with them. I mean, these are my best friends that I have for forever, and I just didn't end the way we wanted to. 
Now, Coach McDaniel said he still wants to play more. Yeah, it won't be in the state tournament, but he still wants at least one more game with his team. Reporting from St. John's, Christy Kopanis, WTOL 11. Christy, thanks. So Barberton gets the winner of this game. Clay, their first ever playoff win last week. Much tougher test at Brexville Broadview Heights tonight. First play from scrimmage, though. How about the Eagles? Jordan Petaway gets off the bus and just goes and scores. How about an 81-yard touchdown run to get the offense going early for Clay? Love that. But Brexville, just too much in this one. This looks like a screen pass, but it's a trick play. The Eagles secondary gets fooled. This for a long touchdown. Clay would fight hard, but they fall just short on the road, 49 to 33. All right, staying in Division II, Fremont Ross coming off a dominant win last week. Little Giants making the trip east to Medina Highland tonight. Fremont down a couple scores, second half. Caden Holmes testing the secondary with a long pass, but it is picked off. And that ball is going back the other way. Then Holmes going to try the deep ball once again. This time, he would connect with Spencer Price. He's got it, stops on a dime, shakes the defense on his way to the end zone for a little giant touchdown. Fremont Ross trying to claw their way back in this thing. Spencer, again, coming down with another catch right here, but tries to do maybe just a little bit too much. Coughs it up, Highland would fall on it. Little Giants can't get it done tonight. They fall 41-21. We couldn't get things going. Uh, we couldn't get the offensive moving. Um, you know, we, we were off. It was off night for um, all the all the guys on the offensive side. This is a game we let slip by. Uh, I thought we were good enough to win this game, uh, but you know, Highland played very well tonight. They executed, they didn't turn the ball over much, and we did, and uh, they were able to capitalize off those mistakes. All right, Division Three now. Defiance was 0-6 in the regular season, but they won last week. Bulldogs taking on Bowling Green, who was 5-1. Bobcats opening drive. They strike quick. Hand it off to Caden Sider. Punches it right up the middle from a couple yards out. It's 7-0 BG. Bobcats, second drive. Now looking for more. Eli Brown pitches to Nick Powers. Finds the edge. Dive past the pylon. It's 14-0. Second quarter now. BG again. Sider again. Pushes his way in for six. Bowling Green routes Defiance tonight, 56 to 13. Also in Division Three, Columbian five and one. Tornadoes getting a home game with Norton. First quarter of this one, Tornadoes capping off a nice first drive in the red zone. Logan Beeson throwing a beautiful ball to LJ Reeves, who stretches just inside the pylon for a score. Still first quarter. First play after Columbian would block a punt. Keyshawn Jackson on the run, no gap. They bumps it outside, gets the edge, and he is gone. 47-yard touchdown run. Tornadoes were up 14-0 early. Then Norton would try to get a little cute here. How about a double reverse pass? But LJ Reeves wasn't fooled. Picks it off, returns it to the five. Tiffin would eventually score. Tornadoes win big at home tonight, 45-13.